For those of you that don't know me, my name is Ross Taylor, and I am the voice of this poem. I'm now going to share my screen. The work for this talk was really done by Harry Coyman with assistance from Jasper van Barten. And this is our contribution to the COLAN 2022 annual meeting. Unfortunately, neither Harry nor myself are able to be there in person, so we pre-recorded this presentation. We hope you find it interesting. Recently, we added petroleum properties into Chemsep, and we wanted to add these to flow sheets. Petroleum properties Cape Open standard has not yet been universally adopted by all potentially interested parties. However, the thermodynamic standard, B1.1, includes the facility to define and add any Cape Open custom property, abbreviated here to COCP. We decided to use this facility to define our extra properties, while understanding that these will not be universally understood. Development of Chemsep started in 1990, and standalone versions have been made available by, via the Cash Corporation. Chemsep includes both equilibrium and non-equilibrium models. Development of the Cape Open version of Chemsep was made possible in part by support from BP International. Later, other industrial sponsors joined the Chemsep consortium. When we started, many simulators used keyword-based input files this changed in the late 1990s when user interfaces based on Microsoft Windows came on the market. Around the same time, the desire for large companies to use their in-house simulation tools in multiple simulators resulted in the creation of the Cape Open standard. A Windows interface was developed for Chemsep in 2000, but this was not released to the wider world until 2005 when we released Chemsep Lite a freely available version of our software that includes our equilibrium stage model. This version was tested with commercial flow sheeting software. We have continued developing Chemsep to this day. This resulted in many new developments, such as adaptive icons, our own property package, including one for electrolytes, and unit operations not offered by commercial suppliers, such as a single unit dividing wall column model. Now we are adding the export of additional properties. In a refinery, all the streams that are blended into automotive gasoline are called MOGAS streams. This is to distinguish these streams from those that create ABGAS, aviation gasoline. A significant part of the MOGAS pool originates with a catalytic reformer where light cycloalkanes in the naphtha streams are reformed into aromatic compounds. Light, unbranched, and cycloalkanes are not very suitable for gasoline because of their tendency to knock in engines. Aromatics, on the other hand, have excellent knock properties. The property that characterizes this behavior is called the octane number, which varies from zero, or n-heptane, to 100 for a fully branched octane. The minimum posted octane number at the pump is 95, this is for Euro Super or Euro Premium or regular unleaded in Europe and is equivalent to 90 in the USA. Note that the dehydrogenation of alkanes in the reformer also produces a lot of hydrogen that gets used in the refinery hydrocracker to upgrade molecules that would be too heavy to put in the gasoline by breaking them into smaller pieces. The reforming process produces a considerable quantity of carcinogenic benzene which must be removed before the reformate can be used in the MOGAS pool to levels lower than 1%. Since the removal of the benzene would lower the octane number of the reformate, the refinery must compensate by blending in additional compounds. This can be expensive. The ExxonMobil benz out process is a simple process that removes the benzene from the reformate by converting it without causing a loss in octane number or increasing the vapor pressure, which would create a problem for tank storage. It does this by separating a light fraction, which is reacted with propylene to create the branched aromatic with a high octane number. Here, 
is our own implementation of the BEMS out process inside the flow sheet simulation program, COCA. Heat inputs and mass flows are shown on this slide. The Reformate splitter is on the left. The reactor is in the middle and the stabilizer on the right. A neat feature of this process is that the feed to the reactor is heat integrated with the bottoms of the stabilizer, reducing the amount of heat lost. The refinery properties are now part of the flow sheet, since we have used ChemSEP as the property package, which includes the octane number, OCTN, and the lead vapor pressure, RVP. These extra properties are highlighted by the red outline that appears on the bottom right of this slide. As you can see here, the Reformate is split 40-60, such that the benzene is present in the overhead. And that toluene, which has a high octane number, passes by the, via the bottoms. This way, the reactor is minimized in size and the heat duties are reduced. So the question that we asked is, can we improve the economics of this process while maintaining performance in octane number and lead vapor pressure? And can we produce a part cut product in which more than 99% of the benzene is recovered when we're sending this to the reactor, this potentially could reduce flow through the reactor and stabilize a by a factor of two. And the other question we asked is, can we use dividing wall column technology to revamp the reformate splitter in the same column? Here is our improved process in which the splitter on the left is replaced by a dividing wall column that produces essentially the same bottom product, but the overhead is now a smaller benzene free stream that is fed directly to the stabilizer. An extra product stream is taken from the middle of the column. This heart cut stream is sent to the reactor. By using a dividing wall column, we reduce the stream to the reactor by half, reducing the total annualized cost for this process. Note that the octane number and read vapor pressure for the stream the MOGAS call have practically not changed from the original process. Further note that the regular Reformate splitter can be retrofit as DWCs when we use high capacity column internals. Other advantage, advantages of this revised process is the flexible co-production of a 58% benzene product. But can we optimize still further? Extra duty enables the co-production of a 96% toluene stream as a separate product if we use a Kybal con column configuration. And we can do that while maintaining octane number of 95 for the MOGAS stream. You can see that here. The ex existing Reformate splitter can be revamped using a sloped wall dividing wall column design as described by Janovich et al. The reference to their work is given at the bottom of this slide. Petroleum properties are listed in this screen. The units are taken as set in the global units definition as you'll see momentarily, that can be changed as well. We, are, we get the little window for selecting the extra properties by clicking on the extra properties button on ChemSAP. This slide lists the currently available petroleum properties that are in ChemSAP. In the future, we'll be adding more. If you have suggestions, please let us know what you would like to see. Most octane numbers are computed from a list of research and motor octane numbers, ROM and MOM, that the user can extend by themselves. 
These are text files, and each component is identified by its CAS number. For compounds the user adds, the RON and MON are estimated by means of a group contribution method from Albari using the modified Unifact groups, or from the original Unifact groups if the groups for the modified Unifact are not available. As the accuracy of the method is dependent on being able to differentiate between cyclic and alkane CH2 groups, it is recommended users ensure the modified Unifact groups are entered. If no group information is known, the RON and MON are estimated by means of boiling point and specific gravity, as for refinery naphtha streams using the correlation of Nelson. This is a graphical correlation that you can convert it to uh, equations or use within ChemSat. It is only appropriate for refinery streams that contain many components that cover a range of boiling points. For the reed vapor pressure, we use approximations based on the TVP100 published by Campbell. This is how the extra properties are displayed inside ChemSat. They appear in the stream table and they appear in the same order in which they appeared in the selection list that we saw a couple of slides ago. This is how the extra properties are selected inside COCO. This is because they were added as part of the ChemSAP Cape Open property package. Units can be changed in the table as desired using the mechanisms that are available in COCO. This is the Fortran code for computing the custom properties directly from our Cape Open property package DLL. First, we obtain the number of extra properties defined in the property package. Then for each property, we get the property ID Using the ID, we obtain the property name, the units of measure, and its description. We obtain the property value by calling the EPROP function, which is about halfway down the slide here, with the temperature, pressure, and the vector of compositions. NC is the number of components, and NC max the length definition for the vector. Upon return, the integer flag I. ERR, I error, is set to a non zero value if an error was encountered. This is to show the calling sequence for the custom properties from within other unit operations. It makes use of a Cape Open material object, MO. First, the temperature, pressure, and liquid composition must be set because we define them as liquid properties. Then the unit operation sends a request to the process modeling environment, PME, to compute the property. The PME passes the call onto the ChemSAP Cape Open property package. The error code is then returned and passed back to the unit operation. If no error is made, the value is picked up. Now that the PME can perform the call itself, as well and get access to all of the extra properties. In summary, we believe custom properties are really useful. Ideally, we would prefer custom properties that could be defined as overall properties, but this is not something we feel is urgent to change or add. We are planning to allow custom properties to be used as specifications in the column simulations. And in the future, the, Cape Open, the petroleum properties standard is fully implemented. We plan to port the petroleum pop properties to also be accessible via that standard. Unfortunately, we are not here to be able to answer any questions. If you have questions, you can contact us via email and delighted to answer them for you. Thank you for attention and enjoy the rest of the conference.